Hello, everybody. This is Craig Houck, CEO of the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame. And before I start, I'd like to thank Roof It Forward for doing the sponsors for me. But today's a special day. We're talking about the 1972 Olympic team with Marvin Johnson from Indianapolis, Indiana, and Sugar Ray Seals uh, from uh, Tacoma, Washington, but now lives here in Indianapolis. And so today is a special day. We're talking about USA Boxing history. Uh, Sugar Ray Seals was a 1972 gold medal winner, and Marvin Johnson was a 1972 bronze medal winner. So we're going to basically talk about something like that. Uh, so in Marvin was a 1971, he's a national golden glove champ, 1972 national golden glove champ, and then he made the Olympics in 72, ended up winning a bronze, and uh, Sugar Ray Seals was like a 13 national golden glove champion, and uh, he's a 1972 gold medal. But today, Marvin, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming to the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame. What would you like to say today? This is my actually my first time in in a any any Hall of Fame. Thank you very and much. And I'm, I'm really, really happy to be here. I, uh, I'm glad that I'm here because of what I've earned. True. Instead of here just visiting. visiting. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Uh, right on. But uh, I, I really, I really met, I, I want to talk about Sugar Ray. Sugar, Sugar Ray. And the day I met him, He's never changed. Same person. Same person as the day that I met him. He's, uh, he's a really great person to know. And uh, anybody that hear me talking, if you ever get to know Sugar Ray, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I, I, I met think, a great guy. And I think we talked about the realism that this is real. <clears throat> this friendship's real. Hold on. Go ahead. I met Marvin Johnson in 1971. It was in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota for the Nationals. We won the Nationals and we won at the, the time. We won on the list for the 1972 Olympic gold medal. We had to win that. That's when I met Marvin Johnson. And then after that, we met in Bear Mountain, New York. We trained with each other. Didn't know each other until we got to Washington, D.C. And we saw this 1973 Lincoln Continental. We grabbed a hold of it because we got that picture. There's a picture <laughs> yeah. of us holding that. And I said, man, when I win my Olympic gold medal, I'm going to get me one. Well, I had two. But, you know, we become friends right after that. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana now for 13 years, right next to Marvin Johnson. I mean, I mean, and yeah, not next to him because he got a mansion. <laughs> you know, we got an apartment. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to say anything. Which I wanted to tell you right now that Marvin Johnson was voted the tenth greatest light heavyweight ever in boxing history. Marvin Johnson is a three-time light heavyweight champion of the world. And here's how ironic it is: in 1972, uh, there was a guy that won the gold medal named Matt Paloff. And, in and then 1978, Marvin challenges him for the light heavyweight world championship, the WBA, wow. in Italy. And Marvin goes over there and stops him in round 10. So, Marvin, I think you're a gold medal winner after you knock those guys out and win the world championship. So, I, I'm going to consider you a gold medal winner. And then in 1979, you <laughs> knocked out Victor Glendez on an yes. undercard of a guy named Muhammad Ali and, and uh, Leon Spinks. And then in 1986, I seen you win the light heavyweight world championship right here against Leslie Stewart. Great job. So, <laughs> 46 and 5. Yes. 35 KOs, three-time <laughs> light heavyweight champion. Well, you were the very first one in boxing history. So I want to yes. talk to you today about uh, tell me your dream. Was that, was that your dream to be world champion? Well, it most certainly to be world champion. But then after I become world champion, I guess I, I had to get another dream to keep me going. And uh, the record that you just talked about. The three-time light heavyweight champion of the world? Well, well, the 10th greatest light heavyweight to ever live? No, what we're <laughs> talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the fight record. The, oh, 46 and 5 with 37 uh, knockouts. 46 and, so and 5. That, that's what I was so happy about it. And yeah. you was at 55 and 5 as an amateur. I had 350 amateur fights, y'all. And I lost 12. I mean, but then I moved on. I went to the Olympics. 
And I became an Olympic gold medalist, but not just an Olympic gold medalist. I became the only American boxer to become an, to win an Olympic gold medal. In 1972. In 1972. That's when we had the terrorist killing and all of that stuff. And I, I was 19 years old. My mother was there. My father was there. And I had to make sure that they was in, out, and rested and, and comfortable and hiding so that everything would be cleared up. After I heard about that, I said, well, man, it's time to go. I was already done one my fourth fight. I just beat the Russian. Time wow. for the Bulgarian. The Bulgarian. And you did it with what punch? The bolo punch. The bolo punch. Uh, you, you should see the tape. It's, it's I watched a, all five it's of It's a left, fights. left, straight left, right hand, and the right left uppercut. Bang, bang, bang. I mean, the, the first round was against, <laughs> it was against West West Germany. Yeah, but listen, I fought, I fought, I, I fought West, West Germany, Germany, Ireland, Cuba, the toughest one there, Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria. I fought them all, man. And At Mar 1920, and they was 27, 35. How did you respond, Marvin, to the terrorist attack over there in, in 1972? Did you keep focus? What did Listen, did it have we some kind of effect? We had to relax. Matter of fact, we was under <laughs> under the bed to get rid of. We didn't. We couldn't look out the window because the window was right there. So they was walking like we're watching this building right now up on the top there. They're walking around, walking with some machine guns, and we're watching. So we have to get under the bed How did to you protect feel? ourselves. Man, I, didn't, I I was scared. How about Marvin? I want to see what more. No. How would you feel, Marvin? Well, it didn't have the same effect on me. Uh, when, when the terrorist attack came, actually, the partner that I was with, he and I both, uh, we just went to sleep and slept through it all night. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's an awesome answer. Wasn't that wrong with that yeah, you, yeah, you fell asleep uh, during the terrorist attack. That. That's went, amazing. We were, we were focusing on the fights yes. still taking place. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all, That's what we was thinking about all, all night. We was thinking about fight. We got to get, get our sleep so we can get up early get in up, the morning. Perform. And then perform. We, we had a tough... And we really... And it worked out. It worked yeah. out fine, but... Uh, we, had, we had a tough uh, chore right mm -hmm. then because our basketball team got beat by the three seconds of the time. Yep. 72. The track team was told the wrong time to get there, so they lost. They lost. And then they and, did, and, and then we got uh, Dan Gable. We had our first wrestling gold medal for the United States. The United States was good. but And then we had uh, Frank Shorter from Portland. Oregon. I've met friends there, but we had, it was so tight. How about the swimmer? What was the oh, swimmer's name? Mark Spitz. Mark Spitz won how many gold Six gold, gold, gold medals. medals. Oh, he was great. Yeah, uh, yeah he man. was phenomenal. But he was gone when the terrorist attack came in. He was already you know, got his stuff and gone. Wow. We had to stay there. Uh, win, lose, or draw, we had to stay there until the whole thing was over with. Well, that But coming back with one gold medal, man, for the United States, you know, my mother enjoyed herself. And a person that she, she's up in heaven with now, and they're still having a good time, uh, uh, Howard Cosell. Okay, well, so we're talking about the 72 teams. <laughs> yeah. Who was all, who was all the, the members on that? We had a, a gold medal winner with you, Sugar Ray, uh -huh. and then Marvin was a bronze. Yep. Wasn't the other kid, uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse Valdez? Valdez was and, a? and Reggie, uh, Jesse Valdez and, and Ricardo Carreras. So that was our three medals? Three, three, gold, three bronze and one gold. Three bronze and one gold. Yep. So I got, three, I got two. I got Jesse and... Uh, the other one, who was the kid? Ricardo. Ricardo, okay. So three. So, so it was only... So they both was in the uh, Air Force. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So, Marvin, when you got out, and you know, from the Olympics, uh, you know, I know he was cha trained by Champ Chaney, uh, uh, you know, uh, rest, in salt, rest in peace, you know, Champ. Yeah, sure. uh, what did Champ mean to you as a, as a person? Uh, well, I'm glad I had him as long as I did. Like, like you just said, uh, he... Uh, Unfortunately, passed away, but I was I was able to get all of him whenever I fought. Yeah, and for every fight, I think I needed him just for every, every, every fight. fight. Because every fight that I had, I, I'm so glad that he was able to be with me. Somebody to believe in. I know. Uh, so just, it just I, made yeah. me feel so good to be able to use him for the time that I did. And, you know, you inspired all in Annapolis, Indiana. He is the greatest fighter to ever come from Annapolis, Indiana, Marvin Jump. And you're a graduate of Crispus Attic in 1971? Hmm. 
Say yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Marvin. There we go. Yeah. All right. So that's Christmas a, yeah. addicts. Yeah, Christmas addicts. Go and ahead, you've been Marvin. married how many years? Uh, Forty. Three. I was going to say, don't blow this because I got Mrs. Tiger back there. Is going to get a, <laughs> she's going to take it out on you there. Yeah. But look, 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 the, look. But one thing I know, here's one thing I like your, your integrity. You've been married for all those years. You've been a great family man. Uh, you've achieved a lot here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And then in 2019, we go to the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Me and Sugar Ray's there, and you get fist casted at the Correct. International Boxing Hall of Fame. That Correct. was amazing. And then we go to Rochester Boxing Hall of Fame, and both you gentlemen get an award, which was amazing. Mm. Unbelievable. And then, yeah. listen to this. Wow. He's getting ready to get in, inducted into the National Boxing Hall of Fame. He would have went this year, but the yeah. coronavirus, so we're right. going to go next year, and we're all three flying out to watch you get into the oh, National yeah. Boxing Hall of Fame in California. Well, mm. I, I'm just uh, yeah. I, I'm just glad to be with uh, people like yourself and Sugar. Sugar Ray. We have your back. Sugar Ray is one of the greatest guys that I've met as a friend. I mean, he's a friend. Sure. And and, and still, he, he, he <laughs> think about how he performed in boxing. Uh, he's a friend, and I, I, I like to have a friend like that. And then we're going to talk. You. And we're going to talk about Sugar. Sugar uh, had a great 21 and 0 career going, and then he ran into a guy named Marvin Hagler or something like that. Went to who yeah. was the greatest middleweight to ever live. Of course, went we didn't know that at the time. We didn't Boston, know. Yeah. He went to Boston, and then he loses, and then he has a rematch in Tacoma, Washington. He has a draw. I, I could have swore I want to whoop that one. But I didn't. Yeah, they were being in to come, being in, in 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 Washington at that time, I really wasn't the Washingtonian that I should have been, even though I wanted to go medal. You know, the best the best thing I like about Marvin Johnson here in Indianapolis was be able to bring world championship fights here mm -hmm. to Indianapolis, Indiana. And I believe, okay, you know, I know Floyd Patterson fought here as a pro. But uh, he was our only home guy that bought a world championship fight from Indiana yeah. to, to, to Indianapolis. That was Marvin Johnson. And, you know, he fought uh, uh, Matthew Franklin, Matthew Saad Muhammad. That fight's on ESPN Classics. And I'm telling you, J. Russell Play Peltz is making big money off that fight because it's a classic fight. I fought it's Sammy Naismith. That Naismith. was in 1981. He fought Sammy Naismith here, here in 1981. 1981. Marvin Johnson was one of the big three. It was Norman Goings, 1970 gold medal winner. Mm. Uh, Sammy Naismith, 71 national gold. Marvin Johnson, 71, 72 gold. It was called the Big Three. Yeah, what correct. Do you, what do you remember about the Big Three, big Marvin? Because this is something I've never heard out of your mouth, and I'm ready for it. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, just like you said, I mean, it was, it was Sammy, Sammy Naismith, Smith, Marvin and Johnson. And Norman Goins. And Norman Goins. Uh, and you, and you, we, we've never... Had that here in Indianapolis. That's the first time. That this is the first time, and for the big three, and it, and to my knowledge, it's the only time. Yes, and you know that was the that was the greatest that we ever did as an amateur team. We got second that year as an amateur, Indiana. When you guys got second over there. Yeah, let me let, let, let me explain what sure, the big three is. Got ahead. Uh, All right. The big three was, was the best. Boxers in the city of Indiana. in Indianapolis. Yeah, I got you. Uh, Indianapolis mm -hmm. that we had and, and, and Indiana. So yeah, true. Well, well, you guys yeah. kept wasn't kept one minute contest. Sam, so uh, so Sammy Norman and and, and Marvin was, uh, were the big three, and they were the best in Indiana. Just no time. doubt about it. Long time. Yeah, there's no question. No question about it. And uh, mm -hmm. and. I just enjoy it. Yeah, you had a good, you had a great yeah, I mean, time. Listen, go ahead. If we had more time, you know, I'd like to go back to Germany, to the Olympic Village, and 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 spend time there, man. See what it is, you know. See if the feeling comes back. I did something, I and I left something, and you know, my mother and father was there in Munich, 1972, to see their son. Win the gold. Win the gold. And, 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 you know, we fought to get to the Olympics because we had to go through so much. Okay. We, we passed our physical in the military, going to the military. We talked to the president. He says, nothing you can do. 
we got a hold of someone in Portland, Oregon. He said, listen, it had to be a black guy. <laughs> he said, listen, I'm going to take your file out and put it on the side, and if you lose, it goes back in. But I said, it's not going to go back in because my mother is in Munich, Germany. Hey, man, well, we got to take a break. And at that time, we're going to come break. We're going to come back, <laughs> and we're going to talk to Marvin Johnson about winning the world title in Indianapolis, Indiana. Right, Marvin, we're going to talk about the 1985 and 1986. Uh, we had two world champions here in Indianapolis, Indiana. In December, J.B. Williams goes over to California and wins the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Mm. And then in 1986, here at Leslie Stewart, you beat Leslie Stewart for the WBC Championship. So Champ Cheney has two champions right next to him, one with the WBC World Championship, one with the WBA World Championship, right here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow. That's the only time it ever happened. Wow. And we got the picture up there in the Indiana Box Hall of Fame to prove it. Wow. Well, yeah, it is a fact. In fact, uh, <laughs> if uh, what the plan was, was for, for us to fight each other. That's what I heard. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. He uh, talks about that. Oh, oh, yeah. And, uh, but that yeah. didn't work out. Yeah. Um, he missed that. Did you want more money? <laughs> no, no, I was going to fight him. For, yeah, anyway. we, we never got to the bargaining table. Oh, I got because, you. Because uh, JJB, I think he lost his title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We, in California. Well, not California. He, he goes over to uh, uh, England and fights like Dennis Hardesty and it gets, loses the title. And then, the, then everything switched. Yeah, but it would have been nice. Yeah. Then two world champions at the same time. I, I would have just paid for the trash talk. That's, I just want to be in the middle of the trash talk. You know, that's Hall, one thing. One thing. Hall, boxing, uh, you know, I, you know, I have the boxing Bible. He but, knows everything. <laughs> yeah, I have anything. Hey, but, but look, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I love the trash talking sometimes, but I never known Marvin as a trash talker. Did you ever talk trash with, with any of your opponents? It's in my face. Well, fist. you would have known it then if I fought J.J.B. Williams. Yeah. Ah, you, now, you'd have heard something. Who was that ESPN <laughs> champion you knocked out in one round on ESPN in light heavyweight from here? As uh, Fonzo, uh, Ma, uh, uh, I don't know. I know, I know. Uh, um, I'm gonna think of his name here in a minute. I'm gonna go to Sugar in a minute, but I'm gonna think of his name in a minute. So tell him what happened in your career. You lost your eyesight, and tell him what in happened. In 1981, I got thumbed in the eye by Jamie Thomas. It was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He thumbed me in the eye, and from then uh, things changed. I started seeing double, you know. But at the same time, being uh, as a professional contender. Uh, I had to fix, get that eye fixed. So I went through seven different surgeries, different uh, doctors, because of my management. And at the same time, I picked up a lot of, I had my record from my, uh, my count, not what's out there, but my count, I had 80 professional fights, 70 wins, seven loss, three draw, 46 knockouts. That's my record. With my amateur record, 350 amateur fights, 12 losses, that's 430 fights total, 19 losses. 19 years I boxed. So he's had over 100 fights. I've had over 100 fights. <laughs> and you've had over 300 fights? Yeah. Um, 420. That's, that's a lot of fights. <laughs> I think I'm, Marvin. It's unbelievable. Hey. You know, you know, but but would you would you say as we think of Indianapolis, I go to the Indian Boxing Hall of Fame, I'll go to California and I'll go to the the Vegas, Atlantic City, and I'll tell them I'm from Indiana and the first name they talk about is who? Marvin Johnson. Marvin Johnson. <laughs> Yeah. And that is the true hey, fact. We think of Indianapolis, it. Indiana. Johnson, we think of Marvin yeah. Johnson. Now, yeah. granted, we think of Tony Zale, who was a world champion from 1946 to uh, 1940, 1946, 46, 48. Yeah. But the first person we think of is Marvin, Marvin Johnson. Johnson. I was talking yeah. to Layman Brewster, uh -huh. and he said that Marvin Johnson inspired him. He actually inspired me. This is, this is the story I wanted to get to. In 1971, my first amateur fight, I was fighting in Des Moines, Iowa. Marvin Johnson is in the same dressing room with me with a guy named, uh, now hold up, I'm going to think of him here in a minute, um, Lovelady, Lamont Lovelady. Lovelady. So Lovelady's over here, and Marvin's over there. And I see these guys hitting the mitts, and I'm like, wow. 
That's gonna hurt. Of course, I'm seven, you know, and I'm watching yeah. him hit the mitts over there. I'm like, wow, that's gonna kill. And you know what Champ would say all the time? He's gonna be champ in the world, my boy Champ. Marvin's gonna be champ in the world. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. And he was all Marvin, you know what I'm saying? And they went out there and fought. And you know, years later, I would be in high school, and my buddies said, "Oh, he's a great basketball. He's a, he's this that." And I said, "No, no, no, no. Wait a second. I saw Marvin Johnson." <laughs> Let me tell you something. Barbara Johnson would whip all of us, and he's that's greatness, okay? He's the three time light heavyweight and yes. voted the 10th greatest light heavyweight to ever live. Marvin's yeah. one of the. Uh, hey, Sugar Ray gets a award at the Pacer game and gets the. What was it they called you? Big pa Pacer. Pacers. Pacers game. Yes. They called me a hero. Hero. And then he and gave me an award, and they called me a hero. Called him a hero, got a award. That's There's, great. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Yeah. Great. I didn't know it. I just went. They told me to come, and I went and went to enjoy myself. I enjoyed the game, but all of a sudden they called me out front and gave me an, an award. That's great. Mm -hmm. It is unbelievable. And then, I, and then I went with my eye doctor, and I think he he hooked that up to well, me because he wanted me to he wanted to check my eyesight out to going down and going <laughs> and so see if I can see things. But yeah, after that, I you know. I'm great. Yeah, yeah, and then he starts giving credit to this person and that person. I'm like, well, what about my boy that Avery's that fixed your eye? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to remember. I got to talk hey, about him. Hey, hey, listen. He, he, he wanted <laughs> listen. to pull that up. See? Yeah, but here's what happened. Because of the coronavirus and everything, I was able to somehow, because it happened, go and get a haircut. That's what it started. So, so I think my barber... For the haircut, because now I'm looking, hey, presentable with a haircut. <laughs> but yet still, you know, sure, I thank my, my, uh, my doctor, eye doctor, because, hey, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be part of the Indiana Pacers. Look at this gold That's medal, great. Marvin. Look at I this gold medal. It. He doesn't go anywhere without this gold medal. It's my American Express card. <laughs> he doesn't leave home without Never it. Never leave home without and it. And he'll come out and he'll pull it up. So we hit a deer going 80 mile an hour. Okay, mm -hmm. and we're on the way to the USA Boxing yeah. Alumni Hall of Fame in yeah. Louisiana, Lake Louisiana. Charles. Oh, man. And then he pulls out that gold. Next thing you know, I get some redneck. I'm, hey, I'll give you 20 <laughs> bucks if you tow us here, there, and there. Next thing you know, we're back on the road in that yeah. new car and everything. Cause name, All because yeah. of the gold medal. Come on. 1972. Yeah. You know, here's what I want to know. You won the bronze medal, and you don't even know where it is. No. I, I've been thinking it, but you say you're going to give him 20 bucks for that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Twenty dollars. You yeah. want a bid? Yeah. Do you next bid? You got I got, I got fifteen. Yes. I got fifteen. I need hey. my twenty. Never leave it. Is that just twenty? You pay you at twenty-two. You, you. <laughs> I got fifteen. I. Hey, I was I was talking to your wife, and she uh, says you because you got the the belts. And you got the WBC, the NABF, and the USBA at the Christmas Addicts uh, Museum. And we can't get to them, but we're going to get you the, they're going to get the WBA belt for you too. But he doesn't even know where his NABF belt is or his <laughs> USBA. And then all of a sudden I'm talking around, and I'm like, didn't we talk at, lose it at a gambling table or something? Or, <laughs> where, where are the, where, what, yeah. what's going on? They're man? in Tacoma, Washington. Is that yours? Where's in Tacoma? You know, I got inducted into the Boston Hall. Yeah, Hall Washington, Washington, Washington. Tacoma, Washington. Washington. Yeah, I got Washington. Inducted into Boston Hall of Fame. Hall so they got my stuff. Gotcha. I saw a picture of you and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. How did you feel well, meeting you Muhammad know? Ali? Ali was a great guy. Yeah. I, mean, I enjoyed gone. meeting him. Yes, sir. Uh, that wasn't my first time meeting him, hmm. but. Uh, it was he. He was so. He's got a great personality. Every every time you meet him, absolutely. <laughs> and so I just I just love to meet him. And he, he even he even uh, tried to help me out with my career, giving me some pointers and stuff. Pointers yeah. what, what I needed to do and uh, everything. So you loved Muhammad Ali. I I was a great fan. Yeah. Great who fan. was your Who was your Who was your uh, hero as you was growing up fighting? Ali. Ali, because yeah, he was Ali. one of mine's too. Who was your hero? Ray Robinson. He was a Ray Robinson fan. Sugar Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson, man. He, he, Ray Robinson was a good fighter. Yeah, he's a great man. fighter. You know? Always on the move. Yeah. We learned how to move. And tell him what Muhammad Ali said to you. Oh, in an autograph, because we met five times already. We're good friends. He said to me in autographs, to the champ, service to others. 
is the rent we pay for our room in heaven. So <laughs> for you to be in the top 10 greatest ever, uh, ever put the gloves on, I think it's an honor. I think okay. we should do a lot more for Indiana Boxing, and that's you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That, and that then you great. are the centerpiece. I, you were my motivation to get the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame, and that's why I put that picture of me and you on the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame Facebook. Even though I painted it and you think you look older. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah and it was my, my, yeah, my, yeah. my girlfriend, my, my daughter's boyfriend that painted it <laughs> and made it made it look I like he was over there. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, so he made you look like he was older. First Marvin said he was ninety. I was like, Marvin, you don't look ninety there. I look ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a great, you know, this has been, been a blessed day. And, but, uh, go ahead. But but the fact that he painted it, he, he meant well. Yeah, he meant good. Yeah, no, that's not all. this guy. No, it was, it was, it was, it was her, her boyfriend. Yeah. That ain't him? No, that no. ain't him, no. Okay. But that, no. that's my, that's my, uh, that's Isaac. You almost dressed? Yeah. Okay. He's my consultant, so. That's it. it just it helps, him, helps me consult. They, they call him Big Dog. Yeah. He's a basketball, IUPUI <laughs> basketball uh, okay. assistant coach. Big Dog. And he actually coached this kid right here at AAU basketball. He had 41 points in Triton Central. He I might have put it on. I got to tell him. He's got the record, 41 points right at Triton man. Central. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> He's okay. a baller, but look. You know, you know here, what, what we do, what you're doing, Craig, is bringing uh, like, champions to the light. To the yes. front. Yeah. Because well, they, they should they, be. They should, you know, yeah. you win, we even got to know about you. You got to re enjoy the, the, the whatever is in front for you, the, the, uh, the goodness. Yeah, the greatness. The greatness. You got to enjoy all that. Lot. Sure. And, and this is it, man. Craig, Craig Hawks. Hey, look, Marvin, I think I'm going to get you this for $22. Twenty-two. Uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. <laughs> Twenty-two dollars. Twenty-two dollars for a gold medal. What do you think? <laughs> you start rolling dice, next yeah, thing you know, yeah, it'd, yeah. Be, it'd be it'd be hawked yeah. off. Be now hawked that off. you've held it long enough, <laughs> it's time to get a nineteen seventy-two gold medal. Look at yeah, that baby. Send it. So back. I, we're gonna get your belt. I want to see the WBC belt. What it looks mm. like, and we're gonna get a picture with yeah, your Christmas yeah. attic belt. Okay. We're gonna get with your wife and talk about. It. But go ahead. What do you got to say? It's been dead. You're going to give 20. How much are you giving that for that gold? Here's what we want to do. Okay. It was 1972 when we when we fighting each other. Okay. So I think $19.72. <laughs> that was pretty witty, Marvin. I like that one. $19.72. So right, well, give me this, a club. Look, man, this is, we're bringing it to an end. This has been the very first Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame podcast. Yes. Uh, again, Marvin Johnson's our three-time light heavyweight champion of the world, yes. 1978, 1979, 1986. He's our only three-time light heavyweight champion of the world. Yes. We thought we should do it with Marvin Johnson. That's what he deserves. I appreciate the Indiana Boxing Hall of Fame there. This is Ray Seals, 1972 yes. gold medal winner, at NABF middleweight world champion. We like to thank anybody that came out here for the podcast.